Gosh, all the things that you do, we could spend this whole 30 minutes just talking about your philanthropic causes, your travels, the Larry Fitzgerald First Down Fund, you help out kids and families running camps, donate a lot of mo money to schools and parks, the Carol Johnson Memorial Fund, um, five USO tours and counting, I guess. Uh, you work with the Starkey Hearing Foundation, um, traveling the world, delivering hearing aids um, to poor areas, poor countries. Big picture, why do you do this? And the, the more relevant question is, where do you find the time to do all of this? I'm very fortunate to be able to do something I truly love to do. You know, you, you're in a similar position where you, you wake up in the morning, you don't be like, oh, man, I got to go to work today. You know, that's, that's not how I feel. That's not how you feel. It's, it's a privilege. And um, not everybody has that same feeling. And I'm aware of that. And, um, you know, so anytime I can get out and put a smile on somebody's face, um, you know, inspire a young person to, to continue to push towards their dreams and their aspirations. And I feel like it's my responsibility to do that because there's so many people that helped me along the way. There were so many opportunities for me to veer off the, the wrong path. And, and I always had somebody, hey, Larry, come on, man. You know, you don't want to do that. That's not, that's not what your parents would want you to do. Or, you know, you're better than this. Or, you know, just continue to keep pushing forward. And I had so many people that did that to me. And, and I feel that's, that's, that's my responsibility, um, you know, as a man is to, is to help people um, around me that need it. I've seen you describe the experience with these hearing aids, giving a kid or an adult a hearing aid in a third world country and hearing for the first time. What's that like? Well, Seth, that's, that's really one of the most special moments. First time I did it and I saw somebody that walked in, sat down in a chair, could not hear. I walked up to her and I was standing right behind her and I whispered in her ear, um, no response. Did it the right side, no response. And uh, I looked at her, she, she had minimal hearing loss. She had meningitis as a, as a child and didn't get treatment early enough and, and lost her hearing. So she wasn't completely deaf, but she had severe hearing loss. And uh, I fed her with some, some strong hearing aids and you know, next thing she was she was in a chair. I mean, she could hear the car. She could hear the si she could hear the sirens or the police sirens. She could hear people talking. It was like her whole world just opened up right before her. She got emotional, and her family was was there. They they had never, you know, seen her be able to respond to this stuff. I mean, it was a, a really really moving experience, and I mean, like, like one I'll never forget. And since then, I've had you know numerous opportunities to, to see that occur you know, on mission trips around the world, and it's uh, it, it is really gratifying experience to, to see somebody that um, has been kind of closed off. You know, when you can't hear, I mean, there's so many things you can't be a part of, and um, and when, you, when you're when you able to get your hearing, like, it was it was really special. And, and it seems to me it would be cool about all these trips you take around the world, Larry, is I'd imagine most of the people you encounter have no idea who you are. No I mean, you look like a strong kid, but yeah. they don't know who Larry Fitzgerald they, is, they, right? They know I'm coming to help. You know, and that's good enough for me. I'm, 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 I'm coming, to, coming to try to help them. You're a very famous guy. And I guess one of the downsides to fame is when you have very private situations, uh, difficulties in your life, they arise, they become very public. Mm -hmm. So you had a very public situation uh, a number of years ago. This was back in 2007. Mm -hmm. um, you were subjected to a paternity suit it was established that you were the father of this uh, this infant boy, <clears throat> and the child's mother later sought a restraining order against you. Um, so that was written about a lot and talked at, about a lot. Uh, what would you like people to know about what happened there, and where does the situation stand? Do you have a, a relationship with your son? I got a great relationship with my son uh, and his mother. You know, uh, you know, co-parent and. We have a loving son that we really uh, admire, and it's great to see him grow up. And uh, you know, about the situation in 2007, you know, it's got into a heated argument. You know, as as parents do sometimes over your kids, and you know, that's all it was. And um, you know, unfortunately, you know, things were said that that weren't always true. Um, you know, but you can't go back and turn back the clock. You know, all I can do now is just be a great parent to my son, uh, you know, lead by example and make sure that he um, understands that, you know, no matter where you are and who you're around, you got to do the right thing. Um, you know, mother talked about it all the time about, 
um, the difference between reputation and character. Your, your reputation is what people around you and see you and view you, perceive you to be, and your character is who you are when nobody's watching. And um, I always make sure that he understands there's a difference between the two. Um, your character is, is extremely important um, because there's nobody there to judge you uh, on your character when you're by yourself making bad decisions. It's important that you always make good decisions when nobody's watching, and, um, and I stress that importance. Um, and we all make mistakes in life, and um, you know you have to be a man when they come, and you have to be able to deal with it respectfully and in the right way. I mean, by the same token, for someone like you, your reputation is very important mm -hmm. to you. How difficult was it for you to see that reputation get sullied a little bit as all of this was being put out there? Um, it was it was it was tough at times, but you know, my character helped me helped me through it because I know who I am. I know what I represent. I know the I know the man that my parents raised, and there are a lot of times you deal with adversity in life and how you handle it. Um, it is a true test of character, and I um, mean, you know, I felt like I was able to deal with it well. Um, and a lot of it wasn't even wasn't even true to reports that came out. But um, you know, it is what it is. It's seven eight years ago, and um, you know, I'm gonna continue to keep moving. Is there gonna be a Mrs. Larry Fitzgerald in the uh, picture somewhere? You're not getting any younger. <laughs> I got news for you. No, I don't know. I don't know. You know, <laughs> I, I just I just take it slow. Um, you know, I'm enjoying life right now, loving my job. You know, it's been in time. Um, you know, my family and loved ones, and um, you know, if that day comes, you know, it comes, but you know, I'm not pushing it. Nothing imminent. You no, don't want to make a big announcement no, right now. Nothing imminent. You don't want no. to cause news right no. now. No. Hopefully, it'll it'll be a while, but uh, the day's going to come where you're going to retire from professional football. You're going to be in the Hall of Fame someday. Let's end the suspense there. And when that day comes, you're going to have a lot of money and a lot of time. Mm -hmm. So what are you going to do with those two things? Well, my charity, um, the First Down Fund, is something that's going to be, you know, in, in the forefront of my, of my thoughts. And um, I'm going to continue to drive that as hard as I possibly can because, like we talked about earlier, you know, uh, the philanthropic side of me is something that is burning. Um, you know, I, I always have that desire to go out there and do and serve. And I'm gonna continue to do that. Um, you know what I'll do in my spare time between that. I, I'm not certain, but you know I know that uh, the charitable component was going to be something that's going to be driving my. Well, hopefully it'll be a while. Yeah, I hope so. Because I love watching you play. Well, thank you. I love watching you hand the ball to the referee, <laughs> and I love hanging out with you. Yeah. Thanks for being on the show. It was a pleasure. It's man. great I to see you there. Having me. Thank hope you. See you again soon. Best of luck this thank, season. Thank you.